Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I believe the previous talk was actually very, very good and um, dealt with some of the issues that are certainly raised with the refinements in PXRF usage. So, um, SGS um, currently use in-field uh, PXRF technology in a mobile preparation unit, and the, te the technology that we primarily use are the uh, Brooker S1 Titan and the Olympus Vanta systems. So, um, the factors that impact uh, the data quality of XRF. Um, like all techniques, PXRF uh, data quality is a reflection of the samples um, that you're analyzing. So the three main factors are the um, elements identifiable and the detect detection limits achievable um, as a function of the matrix density. Um, there's also the issues of the mineralogy itself, the matrix. Um, and the impact that mineralogy has. Uh, this can be in respect to um, the hardness and bias on particle size. And also uh, preparation. Um, are your samples consistently prepared? Um, is the methodology that you use uh, one that is repeatable? Um, so when we're dealing with um, the analysis using PXRF systems, um, I would always recommend that the samples are dry and uh, ground and should be 100% passing a 75 micron sieve. So by taking um, these sorts of steps, you can eliminate some of the initial issues of uh, the sample type, uh, but then we need to um, move on to the aspect of um, site-specific uh, calibrations. So uh, deposits obviously have different uh, mineralogical properties and different elemental concentrations. Uh, different elemental concentrations will have different overlapped effects. So therefore, uh, we would always recommend that uh, we use a site-specific calibration and utilize representative samples uh, for uh, setting up these calibrations for any operable uh, mobile preparation unit. Um, so the SGS service uh, takes into account both matrix effects, mineralogy, and sampling artifacts. And uh, that allows us uh, elements and detection limits uh, by PXRF, which we summarize below. So if we're looking at, um, as previously mentioned, uh, through textile bags and plastics, um, you have a more limited range of elements available, and generally the concentrations uh, for most elements are into the sub-PPM to the percent level, um, but we only we are looking at a handful of elements. Um, if we um, use pulps uh, and the powder preparation, uh, and we use the, uh, the press pellets, and we carry out the correct calibration, uh, the standard soil calibration alone can achieve um, a list which is far more comprehensive and deals with many of the elements of interest. So um, when considering uh, how to utilize PXRF technology uh, in one of your assets, uh, you need to consider um, what sort of level of um, portable accuracy you require and therefore what sort of approach you need to take. Is it a simple um, greenfield operation where the generic calibration may be perfectly suitable? Or are you looking at the, the mine stage where you uh, want to have a site-specific calibration with appropriate QC and QA standards uh, and processes which can accompany those? Um, by utilizing this sort of approach, particularly for mine site operations, um, using this type of technology, it is possible to achieve highly accurate and precise results, um, which will allow you to engage in um, reducing your costs by allowing you to undertake most of your analysis at mine site and only having a relatively small number of samples actually heading back to uh, main laboratories uh, for additional analysis. So, uh, when it comes to QAQC, um, you would look at providing uh, custom calibrations which are compared against um, ICB, ICP total digest data uh, to act as a benchmark across, across your calibration scheme. And um, you certainly need to be looking at a range of samples which are likely to account in a deposit to account for both upper and lower range limits. 
In addition to the initial calibration, um, you need a full custom calibration, allowing you to engage in data verification, um, which we can provide by our central XRF facilities, and also to do QA, QC cross-checks as a percentage of the total numbers of samples analyzed. Um, what proportion of the samples you determine uh, should have QA and QC cross-checks will depend upon the accuracy and the number of samples uh, that you have going through your system. So the higher confidence data that, was, um, that you get from your results means that uh, you're able to make uh, rapid decision-making processes at MindSight. Um, so the value of XRF uh, in field is that calibrated PXRF systems can provide quick information in support of drill programs and provide clients with a high confidence uh, data for real-time decision-making. Uh, this can be achieved for deposits where elemental proxies or indicators are also present. Um, where the client requires more um, spot data from portable XRF units, uh, SGS, SGS can offer a more advanced field-based XRF service uh, using MSPUs and effectively uh, calibrated and QC checked uh, samples appropriate to the deposit. Um, However, one of the real strengths that can come out of using this type of technology is using it in combination uh, with others. Um, I mentioned mineralogy, and we currently um, have developed um, Fourier transform infrared, infrared spectroscopy for quantified uh, mineralogical determinations. Um, there are things that the FTIR cannot do, uh, namely um, sulfides and halides. However, you can use a calculated mineralogy to achieve um, the minerals which cannot be achieved with the XRF system alone. So by using the two data sets together, you're able to provide a complete mineralogical analysis um, on site. Uh, further to this, this will allow you to determine pro uh, properties like uh, hardness of the uh, deposits that you're engaging in. And equally, you can use uh, some of the data which comes from the FTIR in relation to mineralogy to feed it back into uh, the XRF data to provide um, factors to compensate for mineralogical changes. So effectively, it can become a feedback loop, allowing you to attain far more accurate and effective data sets uh, in field. Thank you.